It's me, Mikey Pipes. Did you miss me? I missed you. Hope you're hungry. I'm on my way to a service call. It's a very, it's quiet right now, the schedule. You know, it's kind of quiet, but I'm on my way to a service oh, call. Look at this cool little neighborhood. I've actually never, ever, ever been in this part of Valley Stream. And I am literally going down the block. I'm going that away. Yep, let's go that away. Look at these awesome houses. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Wow, all these Tudor looking houses. Sick, love it. All right, let's see what's going on. No air conditioning, first floor. All right, quick little intermission. At this point, I've been standing at this door for about 10 minutes. Um, knocked a few times, you know, the dogs are barking. I see there's like a kid inside the window and he's staring at me and I call the three contact numbers on the account, um, two cell phones and a landline. I hear the phone ringing inside the house and no one picks up and then I start banging again. I'm like, come on, like you got a text message that I was on the way. You know, with 20 minute notice, here I am banging your door and there's no car in the driveway. And I'm like, yo, what the hell? Wasting my time. So all of a sudden the phone rings and like, oh, we'll be right there. And I'm like, let me be right there. I was like, oh, we're, we're coming down. <sighs> Some people like that. It's whatever, whatever. Hi. Wait, baby, how you doing? This one, wait. This one call boss. This one five me, okay? Huh? I'm sorry. I'm going to call boss. Who's the boss? Ernest Daniel. Okay. What happened? I'm here for the air conditioning. Okay, go on. Air conditioning, okay. Enjoy the air conditioning. Air conditioning, okay. Thank you. Second floor is not working? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hi. Okay. Can you show me the thermostat for the second floor? Upstairs? Yeah, we'll find it. When did it stop working? Um, I'm pretty sure you said Saturday. Okay. Let's see, there it is right here. Let's see what we're set to. 52. I don't hear anything blowing. That's because it's off. Let's put the fan to on. Let's make sure we have fan. We have fan. Mode cool. And let's put this at like 72. Now let's go outside. All right, we got two older carrier units. I hear the contact we pulled on on this one. This one is off. So contact is being pulled in on this one. Let's follow the whip. Is that disconnect? Let me pull out the disconnect. Okay. And now I want to get the tools and take a peek inside. But before I do, a good technician is observant of his surroundings. This thing looks like it's been there forever. It's probably full of PCBs. It's not cool. Let's say no, no something, no PCB maybe, maybe. But you she needs one of these or the power's off. It's cool to the touch, the fan motor. She's seen better days. So we'll get the you know, while I was walking to the truck, I just remembered I actually touched the condenser fan motor and she wasn't hot. So maybe she's out on a low pressure switch. We'll soon find right, out. We got a dual capacitor with a hard start. There's my contactor and she's pulled in, as you can tell. Charred up a little bit, but she's pulled in 
I'm gonna take my voltmeter. And let's see if we have the proper voltage across L1 and L2. And I do not have voltage there. Let's do L1 to ground and see what we got. All right, L1 to ground results in no voltage. It's because my disconnect is pulled out. <laughs> Duh. Uh, still don't got voltage. I'm just continuing troubleshooting here. I made sure I had continuity with the contactor pulled between L1 and T1 and L2 and T2. I also checked for shorts to ground between L1 and ground, L2 and ground, T1, uh, T2 and ground, T1 to ground. These are vice versa. I'm just calling that for that. Just taking a look at the booster. She looks okay. So then I went to the compressor. And let's take a closer peek at this. I pulled back the insula insulating jacket. And I'm taking a look at this compressor right there. And she looks like she blew, a blew its load. Looks like she blew its load. So let me see if I can get in there a little closer for you. Well, she didn't blow its load, fortunately, but the harness has seen better days. Let's test for shorts to ground now that we knew that wasn't really connected. Kind of hard to show you this with one hand and I don't got sippy cup or an apprentice or a helper or whatever, but this terminal to that terminal, I'm getting a resistance of 1.1. 1 1.1 1. 1. 1 between these between two. This terminal and this terminal, I'm getting a resistance of 4.1. And this terminal and this terminal, I'm getting 3.2. Now, the way this usually works is you take the highest number and they should equal the addition of the other two. And I have to go back and see if my math is correct because I didn't bring my Sharpie, but I think we have a little bit too much there. And that may have caused this compressor to do that. You know, it basically burnt out that. And I bet you this hard start it's got something to do with it but let's see if we can bring it back to life all right i found the other electric panel and this double 30 tripped now it's back on okay a double 30 was tripped that's pretty scary right there by the way that is very very scary look at that old electric meter spinning like a top but that's crazy I wonder if that was there. That's very, very scary. We got little kids in this house, you know? That's nuts. All right, I'm not replacing anything with a contactor yet. I'm not doing anything with the this mess. I'm not doing anything with that yet. I'm gonna wager that maybe the capacitor isn't where it should be. It's quite possible. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But I did wire in, I got the quick lug products by mainstream engineering I used a 10 gauge four foot, four foot length and i rebuilt all those terminals i thought i had a copeland uh wiring harness but i didn't but and nonetheless my power is back on i'm gonna put this plate back on just to rest it there you never know what can happen and i am going to utilize the rule of thumb which i'm really going to enforce right now is plug in the disconnect with my right hand, my left hand behind my back. All right, I plugged that in and I immediately heard some popping and sizzling sounds over here. A lot of popping and sizzling sounds at the compressor. So my compressor has definitely seen better days and it's time for a new one. Probably better off replacing the system do a quick little refrigerant check see if we have refrigerant in there but that's the deal with that she's toast so quick little summary compressor's shot shorting out probably locked rotor who knows it sounded like it was a locked rotor um i go back inside you know have a little bit of a translation difficulty there and i'm talking to the younger uh the boy that's there Looks like probably he's in middle school, maybe even uh, in high school. 
and I get a person on the phone, I think it's his mom, and um, I tell her what's going on, and, you know, I basically, you know, I ask, listen, you know, who do I give the diagnosis to? So give it to me. I was like, all right, cool, because I have no idea what's going on right now. All I know is that you made me wait like 15 minutes at your front door, and now I've diagnosed a problem, and now I need to get, you know, discuss with you what's going on and get approval on how to proceed. So I spend, like, over the phone, you know, about 10 minutes giving her the options. Option number one, system is beyond, you know, reasonable life expectancy. I didn't even go into the attic, but you could see, you know, they're probably at least 25, 30 years old. Time for them to go. So that's our first recommendation. Alternatively, if you don't want to do that, you know, we could just replace the compressor. But keep in mind, compressors die for a reason. So if we're going to go that route, we have to do a lot more due diligence here to figure out what the cause was that killed this compressor. And just a side note, I didn't show you in the video, you know, the filter on the top of the second floor, the filter grill, one of those, it, looked, it looked brand new, by the way, literally brand new. And it's one of those things, you know, like that, that foam that goes in the thing and doesn't have, a, doesn't have any like cardboard around. It's just like up there. I'm like, yeah, like I bet you the filter was completely like sat, soaked like with dirt, and dust and whatever. And they just popped this in because it looked too clean, like... So I said, listen, but if, it was a, it was a, if the compressor died for a reason, we need to figure out the reason is. And if you alternatively, I can get you a 407C condenser. I'll probably get that, get that for you in a couple days. I was like, but you really should replace the entire system. And then she tells me, I need to speak to the landlord. I'm like, okay. But she's the one who's paying me, so it doesn't really matter. But I was like, all right. So I typed everything up on the service pal invoice. And I gave her a few options, you know, in writing, on the receipt. And... Earlier today, this was recorded yesterday, earlier today, I called her up again. I said, listen, I just want to follow up, you know, just see if you had any questions, you know, how you want to proceed. And she goes, yeah, the, the landlord is in Africa right now and we can't reach him and he's on safari and he'll be back in September. And I was like, okay, so give me a call when you get an answer and we'll proceed, proceed accordingly. <laughs> oh my God, listen, if you have a property owner, you need to have contingencies in place, and I don't know what the case is here. Maybe she's lying, maybe she's not, but, you know... Oh, my God, it was a green fly. God damn it. But... Shit. I don't have green flies in my backyard. They bite and they hurt. Anyway, if you're a property uh, ma uh, owner and dealing with rentals, you have contingencies in place. You know, if something goes wrong, you got to make corrections and make repairs, but... Whatever. Let me stop ranting and raving. Um, check us out on the Discord channel and also and or WhatsApp. You know, it's we're fastly growing the community on Discord. I'm very active in posting there. And I also, before I publish videos on this channel, I, you know, I release them there as like kind of like a sneak peek. So details in the description box down below. And of course, if you want any free stickers, email me, mike at mikeypipes.com. Thank you so much for watching. Be well. God bless. Stay safe.